Hi, everyone. Welcome to Waste 360's Nothing Wasted podcast. On every episode, we invite the most interesting people in waste, recycling, and organics to sit down with us and chat candidly about their thoughts, their work, this unique industry, and so much more. So thanks for listening and enjoy this episode. Hi, everyone. This is Liz Bothwell from Waste 360. I'm with Gabe Wing from Herman Miller and Dew Knives from Lonely Well. Welcome and thanks for being on the show today. So, Gabe, it's thanks for having that, us. Oh, I'm thrilled you're here. Gabe, it seems that Herman Miller has been on its own sustainability journey since the 50s. Are you able to give us sort of a top level highlight of that journey? Absolutely. So, you know, at Herman Miller, I, I think our our passion uh, for the environment can be traced back to the founder of our company, DJ Dupree. And DJ um, very much created an organization that was values driven. And one of those values that, that's become a red thread that runs through everything we do is this belief that we have an obligation to be a good steward of the Earth's resources. And that the way that that value has manifested itself over the years, I think it's changed, right? As we've learned more, um, we worked in different areas, but but you can we can go back to our corporate archives and, and find a statement, sort of a napkin sketch that somebody captured where in 1953, the founder of Herman Miller said that Herman Miller shall be a good steward of the earth's resources. And I think that, that ethos and, and that value is present today, and, and that's the reason that we're um, connected to the organization next wave. That's fantastic. And I love to see that history. And, and Dune, it's so nice to have you back. I'd love to hear how things have progressed for you um, from your perspective since then and how you're tracking to your 2025 goals. But before we do that, can you just set the stage on next wave and tell us more about that? Yeah, I'd be happy to, and it's so nice to be back, Liz. We, uh, we at Lonely Well, we helped launch Next Wave Plastics in December 2017, and Herman Miller was one of our founding corporate members. So we've been on this journey together for the last, oh my gosh, is that almost, well, it's really been four years, Gabe, since we met, that very first meeting that we met in the summer of 2017 to explore this. And we are I'm happy to say we are on track with meeting our 2025 goals. I think I've learned so much from the member companies about the both the process to source the new material, as well as the the process and the timeline it takes to be able to fully integrate something new into an existing product. So this announcement by Herman Miller, by Gabe and team, is, is one of the most exciting things that we've seen come out of Next Wave Plastics. And I think because we've all been anticipating over the last four years the incredible announcement that they were going to make. It's not the first product that has integrated ocean-bound plastic, but I think for me, looking at the progress that Herman Miller has made, it, it just gives me all the confidence in the world that we will not only hit, but likely exceed our 2025 goal of integrating a minimum of 25,000 metric tons of ocean-bound plastic into products that will never make their way back into the ocean. And I have to say, Gabe, if I can, I know when we first started working together, we all kind of joked about how amazing it would be to find a Herman Miller chair on a beach, <laughs> just kind of discarded. I would love that. I would love to walk along the beach and find a Herman Miller chair. <laughs> But the reality is that no one's going to toss this chair into a river or a lake or a waterway. So we can be rest assured that this material is permanently locked up into not only this product, but the other products that Chairman Miller and others are creating. So it's very exciting. It is exciting. Oh, I, I think, oh go ahead, Gabe. Sorry. No, I, I was going to say, dude, you know, I, I do hope nobody, nobody ever finds a used air on chair, um, you know, floating or on, at the side of the beach, but um, you know, if they do, we'll make sure that we collect it and and recycle that and turn that into another internet chair for sure. <laughs> I see a scavenger hunt in our future, <laughs> where there is no winner. No one will find it. We're all winners because no one will find them. 
<laughs> I think that's the a perfect outcome for that. <laughs> And I mean, we're talking about Herman Miller's iconic air on chair, and uh, I was so happy to see that announcement too, that it now contains two and a half pounds of ocean bound plastic in each one. And what's amazing to me, Gabe, is that you guys didn't sacrifice any of its beautiful design. Can you talk about a bit more about that process and how your team did that? Sure. I, I think, um, you know, when we started work with Next Wave, um, you know, in the, in the back of your mind, you're like, hey, if I, if I want to make an impact, you know, what's the product where we can um, really drive a lot of volume and and make an impact? And, you know, the team at Herman Miller, I, I think we carried around this this ambition of being able to influence a product like the Aron Share. And in order to get there, um, it, it takes time. And, and the idea of working really closely with the material suppliers and identifying what ocean bound plastics are available and then working with the next wave um, collection of companies to to make sure that we've got the right partners inside our supply chain and we understand what materials are available and what are the opportunities that we have to incorporate them in our products so going through that exercise number one it's, it's matching up what materials are available in the volumes we need the quantities and the colors and then working with our existing suppliers, our, our injection molders, um, to make sure that we can process these different materials, right? So we're, we're moving from a, a well-characterized new plastic, right, a virgin material that hasn't been used before, to um, these recycled materials. And, and it's not just a matter of sort of dropping the recycled plastic into your existing process. We've got to make sure that we can mold it and that we're getting good parts and those parts are durable and they're aesthetically um, appropriate, right? The, the color matching, all of that, that takes time. And um, that whole journey um, led up to this point where we're able to announce that uh, we've added, you know, up to 2.5 pounds of plastic in our, our black versions of the Aeron chair, which um, reflects the work of so many people inside and outside of her miller in order to make that happen because i can tell you it's not easy and um having people understand what we're trying to do big picture and, and address this global issue i think it's, it's easy to get resources get people fired up about solving the problem that we're, we're addressing with the ocean bomb plastic and then the idea of um, having people understand that hey maybe this recycled plastic this ocean bomb plastic is is it's like a premium material and sort of rebranding that. Um, I think, think it's just, it's been super exciting to work with Dune and her team and the rest of the Next Wave members uh, on this journey as we start to incorporate these ocean bound plastics into our products. Fantastic. And I love how you admit that it's not easy, but you still weathered it in changing the material because I'm sure that affected your entire line. No, if you saw some of the, the first parts that came out of the tool, right, um, they would have been what you call short shots. And um, the, the part didn't really fill. So if you can imagine getting like a half or a quarter of the air on frame, that's what we're dealing with. And um, it would have been, the easy thing would have been to say, hey, it didn't work. But that's just not the approach of, of the team that we had. And we worked through those challenges. And um, yeah, we've, we've got a product that, that looks and performs like the air on chair. Um, you would expect. Fantastic. And Dune, tell me, how did the pandemic affect your work and the supply chains that are critical to make all of this succeed? Well, one of the things that we were particularly paying attention to during the pandemic is is exactly that. How is it going to be affecting the supply chain? And And we knew that a couple of years prior, when China passed its you know, I think landmark policy to no longer accept waste materials unless they were of a certain um, quality and in a certain form, it, you know, it really dramatically affected the supply chain of our next wave member companies that were working with fishing gear. Um, it became more difficult to ship it. It took longer. They waited longer in the ports. So we started seeing backlogs. And what we fully expected during the pandemic was the ocean-bound plastic supply chain 
that Herman Miller and the other Next Wave member companies were working so diligently to, to develop and to source from would experience slowdowns as well. What we didn't expect, Liz, during the pandemic was how much more committed the Next Wave member companies would, would become and how much more of a resolve they would have, I guess it's fair to say, in their commitment to sourcing this material and to really care for the communities from which this material is coming from. In some cases, we saw some of our member companies actually triple their orders to give assurances to communities that they were going to be there for the long haul and stick with us. You know, this is not going away. Our commitment is real. Our commitment is long term. Our commitment is to you. It's to the ocean. Um, and during the same time frame, although none of us could travel, member companies um, and, you know, our Lonely Well team, same, none of us were traveling anywhere. We spent a lot of time working together virtually on what we call our, our Next Wave Plastics framework for socially responsible ocean-bound plastic supply chains. So we took this opportunity, we took this time as a consortium to really make sure that we were we were really aligned on how we saw our work in regards to the communities from where the material is coming from. What is it that we hold to be true about the social impacts we want to have? And then how do we start to engage others in this process during this, you know, quote unquote downtime? It really wasn't downtime for anyone, but it was an opportunity to really make sure that we were, you know, we were really aligned and we were moving forward as diligently and strategically as we possibly could on behalf of these communities. So while Herman Miller was, you know, busy getting this incredible announcement ready to go and um, you know, others were reinforcing, recommitting to the communities from which this plastic was going. The next wave member companies, including Herman Miller, were busy at work, continuing to advance our own knowledge, our progress, the standards we hold ourselves accountable to, so that we could make sure when we came out of the pandemic that we, you know, we had, we were, we were evolving in our thinking um, and not really resting on our laurels. I guess is a, another good way of putting it. So there's a lot of action, a lot of activity, a lot of incredible strategic thinking and collaboration that really has taken place over the last year and a half. And we'll release some of this more in the fall and in the winter, but I feel like coming out of the pandemic, Gabe, I feel like Herman Miller and, and the other companies, I feel like we're in such a strong position. We've got these strong products that have come out as a, a great foundation to build from, and then also just a growing kind of collective awareness and commitment to the social side of the impact that we can have as, as well. Yeah, dude, I, I, thanks for bringing that up because I, I think for me personally, um, what's really exciting about being part of Next Wave, you know, absolutely we're, we're making an impact from an environmental perspective on a, on a global issue, but I think just as important is the social impact that we can create. So as we start to stand up, you know, these supply chains to help collect and gather this ocean bomb plastic across the globe, we're creating jobs and income for people who other, otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to, to make money. And by creating demand for this, this waste material um, and signaling, signaling to the marketplace that, hey, we can, we can gather, we can gather at scale and we can we can make fantastic products using that. The fact that we're um, hopefully um, right, the intent is to create and uplift these people in parts of the world who don't have jobs, and starting to create the social framework from an assessment standpoint to make sure that we're we're doing this all you know properly and not creating negative impacts. I think having spent as you mentioned in the past. Um, 18 months or so, trying trying to codify that, and then work with um, some other NGOs to make sure that that the right things are happening on the ground. Um, that part of it, I think, also feels um, super rewarding for us to be part of. 
And it's the, it's the combination of the environmental and social impact that we can create. I think that gets everybody excited at Herman Miller to be part of this project. I love to hear that. And I love to hear the impact you're having on the ground and to humanize the, the waste pickers and really create um, an economy for them. That's fantastic. I mean, I think that's what it's really all about is that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a reflection, I think as well during the pandemic that these communities if you call them waste cleaners or waste pickers or whatever label, we tend to think of them as these are the people on the front line. This is the fence. And this is what is these individuals in these communities, these humans are what is preventing this material from getting into the ocean. They, they can't do it unless they can make money at it. And to be able to have the confidence this is going to continue, they need companies like Herman Miller to say, we're going to, we're going to buy this. We're not doing a, a one time product. You know, if, if that was going to happen, that would have happened two years ago, Gabe, right? <laughs> you could have come out with that a couple of years ago. But what we're showing and what we're demonstrating to these communities that were some of the hardest hit by the pandemic, they, you know, we had more waste being collected than ever before. We had in the States and elsewhere, where we have more, I guess you call it Western formalized waste management infrastructure, um, even that was starting to erode. And we were no longer able to see everything recycled that we once thought we could in the United States and abroad. But these, these communities need to know that companies are going to be there for the long haul. And when they collect this material and they start to build their entire community around it, and they start to count on this income for their child's education or for a community center they want to build or to have a bank account for the first time and start saving money, however they define success, they need to know it's there for the long haul. And, and that is something that's really exciting when you see a company like Herman Miller come out with not just one incredible, iconic product that is making a difference, but multiple products. And now the entire company is thinking about this and they're really committed to this and they're committed to those communities. That's where I feel like really significant change can happen. And, and that's one of the reasons why this, it took a long time, but you know what? I feel like it should. I feel like for real systemic change to take place, it shouldn't happen overnight. It, we should expect that it's going to be companies time to get it right. Because when you take the time and you get it right and you involve the multitude of stakeholders that Gabe and team have done at Herman Miller, then you have a long-term commitment. I don't know, Gabe, if you have thoughts on that as well, but I, that to me is what, it's one of the biggest learnings from an environmentalist standpoint is that if we want companies to change, we need to have the patience and we need to have the fortitude to be able to recognize that real systemic change takes time. That's super well said, Dune. I think the conversations that we had with our leadership team early on was, you know, we could have gone out and, and added ocean-bound plastic to a, to a simple product, existing product, or we could have created some sort of trinket. And that wasn't the intent. And so the way that we framed it up is, you know, ocean-bound plastic is going to be an innovation platform for us. And um, it's going to help us increase the amount of recycled content we have in our products. We're going to create social impact. Um, it's got the ability to reduce the amount of carbon inside our products as well. And if you look at the work that we've done to date, you know, we're not just talking about the air chair. I mean, that is the product that, that I think gets everybody excited. But, you know, a couple of months ago, previously, we launched a textile collection um, using ocean-bound plastic and recycled materials in general, even a biodegradable polyester. Um, we've got um, plans underway to incorporate ocean-bound plastic into another one of our seeding products. And our new product development teams are held to a goal, right? Next Wave has their overarching goal. And last year, we set an initial target to add um, 380 tons of ocean-bound plastic to our product lines. So we're, we're working with our new product development teams and looking where is the opportunity where we can plug in this ocean-bound plastic into our new product development pipeline. So those teams are asking, like, hey, what, what plastic parts am I making today? And where's the intersection between what ocean-bound plastics are available today in, in the short-term future? 
and how do we start um, adding more into our product line. So it, it's it's definitely not just the on chair. That's the piece that we're talking about that um, I, I think is, is the example, but um, this is something that's gonna serve as the platform for us to work from going forward. That's fantastic. And then Gabe, do you see that externally too? I mean, obviously it worked internally, but the fact that you're showing that this can actually be done in a wildly popular product, it must inspire others to want to at least inquire about using waste materials in their products. Are you seeing that? Um, you know, it's, it, it is, we're starting to see in our supply chain. So existing suppliers who maybe weren't offering um, ocean bound plastics, quickly when they saw the momentum, like we're starting to see more pull from our suppliers. So I think we're signaling them that this is the direction we're going in. And then I think if you look at some of the other industries, I think absolutely. Um, the fact that you've got Herman Miller, um, as well as the other next wave companies working on this, demonstrating this is possible. I, I'm really hopeful and optimistic that we're gonna start to create some more demand in this area to address this global problem. Amazing. And Dune, are you seeing more interest as well? I am. So we have a, a tremendous number of suppliers that are engaging with um, Next Wave Plastics. In addition to other organizations that support companies like Herman Miller um, that are, are really interested in learning about the collaborative approach, how can you in incorporate that? Because our, you know, one of our theories, Liz, from the last time we spoke, is we still hold very true to what we're doing. Is anyone can have impact by themselves. The real magic comes when you have collective impact, because your your learning uh, time is decreased, your efficiencies are increased. It's more fun. <laughs> I mean. Let's be honest about it. It's, this is tough work. It's hard out there, and this is a—it's a lot of fun. This is a family. It's a family of companies, and it's a family of, of humans within these companies that are really bonded together around this. So we're seeing a lot of interest in what is the model, what are the lessons learned, how can this model be replicated elsewhere. Um, but we're seeing a lot of interest from other companies who are also doing this, and and even taking you know, taking the concept of ocean-bound plastic and now saying, okay, great, and what else can we do beyond this? Which is something we always love to see um, from a Lonely Well perspective is, is how does this spur curiosity and get more engaged? I, I have to say though, if I could, I, I love the Aaron chair and I love Gabe, what you guys have done with the Aaron chair, but I think it's probably no surprise to you that the, the product, that, or I guess the item that got me most excited a couple of years ago when you started talking about, we think we could do it in here and we could actually integrate a lot of material into this, is the returnable shipping crates. And integrating ocean bound plastic to those returnable shipping crates, I mean, Liz, customers never see that. That is not something mm -hmm. that you would even know about, right? Unless it was in the press release. But for me, what I'm excited about is is what Gabe and their team have done is, is they have reached far and wide as deep as they can into their supply chain, not just from a materiality standpoint and an engineering standpoint, but really looking at like, where else is there plastic? <laughs> where else is there material that we could actually replace with this ocean bound plastic material? And how do we also start looking at other ways to just reduce our overall footprint by increasing recycled content? across everything that we produce at Herman Miller. So the, that returnable shipping crate for me was the indication that I had that Herman Miller is in this for the long haul. It's not about, it is about the air on chair, like it is the most iconic and it, it that is going to get everyone so excited about where they can innovate. But I love to see this curiosity and just finding every single place that you can find to integrate ocean bound plastic into and stop this material from getting into the ocean. That to me is so exciting. And I think we're gonna see a lot more advancements and in innovation throughout the entire supply chain because of those kinds of advancements. Definitely, and Gabe, that's so exciting to me because I, I often write about obviously recycling and, and waste and the end of life. The fact that Herman Miller and, and your team really thought of this from end to end. Yeah, that's. I think that's just testament to the, the team at Herman Miller, 
um, whether it's a supply management team or a packaging team, um, taking, again, this platform and looking at it, how can we extend that across our entire operations? And th things like, um, you know, reusable shipping containers aren't particularly sexy, but we use them day in and day out and working with our supplier to figure out how much recycled content can we put inside that container where it still performs the way it needs to. And um, I think along those same lines, work, working with our um, plastic bag supplier, um, as much as we're trying to eliminate the use of single-use plastic packaging, um, there are still the need to use bags and then working with our bag supplier, start to incorporate ocean-bound plastic into an imperfect product and making those incremental changes. So I, I think a lot of times, you know, organizations or companies get hung up on wanting to hit a home run, right? And you want that air on share win, but you can make progress with a lot of these um, singles and whether it's the shipping containers or the plastic bags, I, I think those things are extremely important too and they all add up to making a big impact. Oh, I bet they do. I think that's amazing. Thanks, Dune, for pointing that out. I, I'm so impressed by that. And then, Dune, I read that Lonely Whale joined the Plastic Action Partnership. What What is your role in that? Yes, um, Lonely Whale joined on behalf of Next Wave Plastics to the World Economic Forum's Global Plastic Action Pact. Um, what has been so impressive to us about, it's called GPAP for short, what GPAP has been doing is, um, you know, similarly to Next Wave Plastics, is they are pulling together multiple stakeholders within a specific region to be able to identify the, the systemic drivers that are creating a situation where we're having so much waste material and really understanding the human impact, the community impact, and then the role of policymakers, the role of entrepreneurs and investment capital, and then um, what we bring to the table is then what is the role of businesses like Herman Miller to be able to play a, a really strategic role in helping to eliminate waste and increase a circular economy perspective. But, you know, again, making sure that this is a systemic change and it's not something that just happens for the next two to three years. So we loved following the progress of GPAP, um, and quite honestly, we're really honored to be invited to become a member and, and just really looking forward to how we can continue to share our learnings, learn from them. Um, and I think this, the development from the Next Wave Plastics member companies of the first ever framework for socially responsible ocean-bound plastic supply chains is, is a going to be a real cornerstone of our relationship between Next Week Plastics and GPAP. They provided a lot of input from their global perspective on that framework, really helped make sure that it was it was really aligned with the international standards and bodies of knowledge that it needed to be. And then in turn, what they're really excited for from us is to be able to share with them how we're applying it in the areas with the suppliers and the supply chain that our companies are working with and working to develop so that we can just continue to add to our collective base of knowledge. Um, and I think that's really important because all of these entities, Next Wave Plastics, GPAP, um, the Innovation Network, Circulate Capital, um, and others, we all play very, I think, complementary roles. And that is such an important foundational principle of Next Wave Plastics. We all play very complementary roles to each other, and it's when we come together to share these learnings that that we can really grow much more efficiently and quickly. So GPAT for us was um, truly, truly honored <laughs> to be has to be a member. We think very highly of the organization and how it's been approaching this this plastic waste crisis. Oh, that's fantastic! And I feel like even since the last time we spoke, so much progress has been made on many levels in, in addressing the crisis? It, it has. I will say the thing that is um, still striking for me, Liz, and, and Gabe, you, you're in it at Herman Miller and you are working with suppliers and you're you know, working on these products. And from our vantage point at Lonely Well and, and Next Wave Plastics is that we're, we're still looking for 
others to really ramp up their efforts. It's exciting what this group of companies is doing. And, and we need to do more of it. And in fact, you know, Next Web Plastics, I feel like, is the perfect illustration of two of the, the simplest, easiest ways to address the plastic waste crisis that came out in the Pew Charitable Trust in Systemic Report. It's about collection and mechanical recycling and just uh, creating value for what's considered a waste product today. That's the perfect equation and that's what Next Wave Plastics is doing. But if we continue business as usual, by the year 2040, you know, the Pew reports is the best we can do is 5 million metric tons of new plastic entering the ocean every year. And I think we fundamentally reject that. I think it's important to understand Next Wave Plastics as a consortium is very successful. We will hit our goal. We will do everything in our power to exceed that goal. It is one initiative. And there is such opportunity for others to join, for others to, to you know, go further in their commitments. I'd love, honestly, to see 25, um, 25 Next Wave Plastics out there. I would love to see people replicate this model and for more companies to join so we can take these successful learnings from Herman Miller and the incredible announcement they just came out with. And over the next four to five years, we can really exceed all of our expectations and prove that Pew report wrong. It's a personal mission we have. It's like, I want to prove it wrong. I want to demonstrate that we can do better than 5 million metric tons of new plastic entering the ocean every year by 2040. So. We reject that, but we need more companies. We need more Herman Millers. And my big hope with this announcement is that this will become so inspiring for people. Yeah, it's hard. Yes, it takes a long time. But you know what? You got Gabe. You got Gabe and the entire team at Herman Miller. And no shortage of willingness and desire to share lessons learned and to get the job done together. Gabe, I signed you up for something. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I'm all in, June, and and for me, I think Lonely Whale and Next Wave, like your organizations, right? That that group is focused on action. Like I think it's so easy to join groups that sit around and talk and and, and share best practices. And I think that's great, but to me, what's fundamentally different about the the network and the collection of companies that you've carefully curated is that we're focused <clears throat> with your with your team's help on driving forward and taking action. And that's why we've all been able to make the impact we have collectively. And so I, you know, as much as I want to see, right, we want to see more more groups um, solve this problem. You know, I'd say to me that the secret sauce in all this is the energy and passion of, of the team at Next Wave who create an environment that allows us to work together in a collaborative way to solve this problem. And we're focused on getting things done versus just talking about it. And I, I wouldn't underestimate that, mm -hmm. that none of this wouldn't, none of this happens without the team at Next Wave to continue to help us pull forward it and have a bias towards action. Yeah, I think that's so well said. There's a, a saying that, that we say a lot, and it's never confuse motion with progress. And so we're, we are very committed to that action, and it's very specific, Liz, towards that 25,000 metric tons, but also creating this network of ocean-bound plastic suppliers. And, and that network then gives companies like Herman Miller confidence that they need to know that there's continuity in the supply chain, especially when we're working in so many, you know, so many areas where there's not only a civil unrest, but how many natural disasters has Haiti had over the last few months? And if we are only pulling out of one country and only supporting one country, if that supply chain is disrupted for any period of time, then it's going to cause problems. Um, and we want to make sure that we've got continuity of supply of the right quality, the right quantity, and and that the member companies, you know, can really have that confidence going into this. So yeah, you're right. You're totally right, Gabe. And and I think you too as well. Like, what's great about the next member companies, Liz, is that they challenge each other. I'll never forget one meeting. Actually, it was at Herman Miller headquarters, and we had this um, 
we had an, another member company who said, I think they said, gave something to the effect of, all this is great, but can't we do more? <laughs> and that's, I think that's like a, it's, it's a standard question that is asked at these meetings is, okay, this is amazing. And what's next? How can we improve? How can we have more impact? And so we get a lot from the member companies that, you know, that allows us at Next Way Plastics to continue to drive forward towards that action that has real impact. I was just going to add, like, you know, if, if you want to feel inspired and empowered, you attend the Next Wave meeting and, and the energy in the room about doing more, um, it, it's real, it's visceral, and it's always exciting to be part of that group because because of the collective passion in there and, and it's you know it's all it's exciting and refreshing to see people set aside their corporate right their corporate hats to set aside the herman miller hat and and work collectively to figure out how we scale this effort and um it's just it's a wonderful experience i don't know how to describe it but when you're in a room of of smart passionate people with brilliant ideas on how to solve problems, um, that's how you get this multiplier effect, right? That, that's, how, that's again, um, that's where the magic happens when, when you've got the right collection of people. And um, I think that's what Next Wave does. It, they put us in a room, whether it's virtual or, or real, real life, and um, the energy there is, is what helps drive us all forward in the right direction, as Zoom said. I love hearing that. And the commitment that that entire group has, Dune, is just, it's, it's amazing. And the work that you're all doing and the people you're inspiring, I, I just can't wait to see, see what is next as you all challenge each other. Yeah, it's, well, and I, I think the challenge also comes in the form of, you know, a member company being willing to raise their hand and say, I love where we're going with this. The reality is though, it's gonna be really complicated to get it done. We're committed to it, but how do we wanna move forward smartly? And, and Gabe, I actually think it was you, I give you credit for this, uh, at, at the Herman Miller meeting that we had a couple of years ago, where we started talking about social responsibility. And you, you, know, you raised your hand and you're like, this is yes, 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 we need to do this. And, this is complicated and how we think about this across all of the companies is going to be really different. And so let's, let's take a step back first. Let's walk before we run. And that really then resulted in this, this, I think really solid framework for social responsibility. So that's what we also look for from the companies is how to push each other, how to support each other and how to also bring, their expertise to the table and know that they have a forum and they have a group of, of professionals. I mean, we have, we have all the chief sustainability officers and sitting around the table, you know, they this is a group of incredibly talented experts at the table, bringing the best of what they know how to do in a way that, you know, really does truly create a collaborative moment. So, it, it really is the magic is about the people as well and and who they how they show up how they show up for each other and and that's why we're really careful and who we bring to the consortium because we want to make sure that that magic continues and gabe do you have any advice for a brand or company who's thinking of entering this um, because i feel like you're so good at being transparent about the challenges, but the end result is so worth it. Do you have any advice for getting started? You know, I, I would say think big and start small and take your time, right? You can rush into it, but you know, it, it took us several years to, to figure out what the right path forward was for us. And, and we learned a lot. And so the other thing I would say is, is find somebody who's, who's already on the journey and learn what you can for them. So whether it's Herman Miller or one of the other Next Wave companies, um, reach out and, and take the shortcut where you can. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but if somebody's got some learning along the way, I'm a big fan of learning from others. And so I, I'd say reach out 
and um, get some get some shortcuts along the way, and then figure out what makes sense for your company, your organization to go forward on, and find that intersection between your values and uh, the big problems we're dealing with, and then let's solve them together. I love that. How about you, Dune? I would. The piece of advice I would give to anyone wanting to do either this or something new is to be really curious and to, I think, check your ego. What, what this, you know, solving for the plastic waste crisis requires all of us to, I think, cast aside the way that we think things should work. And to be willing to ask questions, be willing to receive input, be willing to be vulnerable. And, and, and I think to realize that you don't have all the answers. If we had all the answers, we wouldn't be in this situation. I, I think that's the most important thing is be willing, in addition to what Gabe said, 100% agree, but I, I think it's be willing to be vulnerable and uh, and to be excited about getting input from others. And then together, we can really make change happen. I love that. And I love this partnership. This What an amazing announcement, Gabe. And I'm so happy to see what Herman Miller is doing, even beyond the iconic chair. I just, it's really impressive. And you're walking the walk and talking the talk. So congrats to you and your team. Thank you very much. And Dune, what's next for next wave? Well, we are releasing this fall the very first um, framework for socially responsible ocean bound plastic supply chains. That test is really exciting. We're looking forward to getting a lot of input on it from folks who haven't yet been able to provide input. And then we are working closely with a couple of organizations to be able to put this framework into practice so that we can, we can really, we can evolve it. Um, but importantly, so we can really start to understand where different suppliers are in the maturity map that we've built um, and how, as a consortium, we can work together to make sure conditions in the communities where this material is coming from are of you know, the highest standards um, aligned with those communities' interests and needs. So that is one of the biggest things we have coming out this fall. Um, we'll also be announcing some new members this fall, which we're really excited for. And um, <laughs> I, I, I think just continuing to progress towards our, our 2025 goal and I think challenging ourselves to how we can really exceed that. Fantastic. Well, I've no doubt you'll exceed that. And um, I really appreciate both of you being on the show today. I've learned so much and you're really inspiring to us. So thank you both for being here. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's really a pleasure. And Gabe, I fully expect we're going to do this more often. I'm very excited too. Congratulations on what you just released from Herman Miller. It's really exciting. Well, thanks for the kind word, kind words, Dune and, and Liz. I very much appreciate the time to share a little bit about what we've been working on. Amazing. Well, thank you both. You two are very good at this together. So please do it more. <laughs> You got it. <laughs> Liz, it was nice to talk yep. to you again. You too. And congrats again, Gabe. And um, I really can't wait to watch what else you all do. This is fabulous. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned. I'm excited about where we're going as well. So um, look forward to the opportunity to uh, chat again. Okay. I would love that. So keep us posted, please.